Hey everybody, welcome to part three of investment. In this video, we're going to be talking about investment from the macro standpoint, from the macroeconomy standpoint. Now, before we get too far into it, let's talk about what investment is one more time. Investment is business spending on their business, okay? It's businesses oftentimes spending money on machines, equipment, software, computers, just businesses spending money to make their business better. Now, we're going to be looking at investment from the macro economy perspective, which means looking at the economy as a whole. So we're going to be looking at the investment demand or the demand for doing investment spending at the macro level, looking at across all businesses. All right. Now, in videos one and two of this series on investment, I've been looking at investment really at an individual business level where a business was looking at five different projects. But now I'm looking at the entire economy, so there are a lot of projects out there. There's a ton of businesses. If you had each business looking at, say, five projects, and by the way, some businesses like Google and Apple are, I'm sure, looking at way more than five projects. If we looked across the entire economy at all the business projects that were being looked at, we would see millions of projects. And since we would see millions of projects, that means when we try to do our investment demand curve, we would have millions of dots on this curve. Well, I'm not going to put millions of dots. What do millions of dots look like on a curve like this? They look like a line. So anytime we talk about the investment demand curve at the macro level, we're just going to see a line. Now, I do want you to know that if you zoomed in on that line, you would see the type of stuff that we saw in the first two videos, a stepwise function, okay? You would see a bunch of dots. But we're zoomed out, and that's what we do in macroeconomics, looking at the economy as a whole. And so the investment demand curve is very much going to be looking like a line. But I want to remind you, what is the investment demand curve based on? It's based on the expected real rate of return of business projects. So the way that I like students to kind of think about how we get the investment demand curve is I want them to first think about graphing the expected real rate of return of business projects onto a graph. And I want them to put that, those projects on a graph in descending order, going with the projects that have the highest expected real rate of return to the lowest. So let's just say we look at all of our projects that are out there and we're going to get a curve that looks like this. And that is my ER curve, my expected real rate of return of business projects curve. It's a curve that simply represents the expected real rate of return of all projects in my entire economy. Some projects will give us a high expected real rate, real rate of return. They would, they would occur early in the line. Others that give us a lower expected real rate of return would appear later. Now, what's important to understand is that curve, that ER curve, gives us the investment demand curve. It is the investment demand curve. It provides for us the investment demand curve. Now, to understand that, we need to understand what the investment demand curve communicates. <clears throat> Sorry. It communicates, the investment demand curve communicates the quantity of investment spending that we're going to get at every single interest rate. So, with that said, let me look at this vertical axis. To get my ER curve, I was seeing these percentages, 1%, 2%, 3 4 5 6 7 8 these percentages as ER. But when I start looking at this line right here, not as my ER curve, but as my investment demand curve, I am seeing these percentages as the real interest rate, as the real interest rate. Okay? So let's understand this a little bit better. Um, what I like to do is I like to say, hey, all of the dots that make up this line really are my expected real rates of return of my business project. So I like to write that on the line to remind myself, hey, all the dots that make up this line are the expected real rates of return of business projects. And then I like to think, well, which projects are we going to do? What is going to be our quantity of, uh, of investment spending? And that is very much based on what the interest rate is in the financial markets. Now, this is not a financial market. This is simply an investment demand curve. So I'd have to go look at the financial markets, otherwise known as the loanable funds market in the macro class, and I'd have to find the interest rate because markets determine prices and the interest rate is a price. So I go look at the financial market and I find, oh, the, find out that the interest rate is, say, 8%. So 
I'm now going to look at this number. I'm going to say right there is 8%, okay? And I'm going to look at that percent as the interest rate. And I'm going to draw that out just like this. Just put a little dashed line right here. That right there, that interest rate is the cost of doing a business project. That's right, the interest rate is the cost of doing a business project. The expected real rate of return is the benefit of the investment project. With that said, which projects am I gonna do? I'm gonna do those projects that have an expected real rate of return that is greater than the interest rate. That is greater than the interest rate. So I will end up doing this amount of investment spending. I'm gonna do all those projects that had an expected real rate of return greater than the interest rate. And it's actually okay to say, do all those expected real rate of returns greater than the interest rate or equal to the interest rate. You can say it either way.